Hello, everybody. Welcome for welcome to the show. Thanks for coming back. I have been up on the mountains chopping firewood and uh, making sure uh, we have stuff to burn for the winter time. So I have been out of commission. I apologize for that. But I am back, and uh, most of the firewood is stacked, so I can get back to the real work. Uh, this episode is about picking an object up and moving it once you are in VR. So uh, basically, it's using your reticle to look at something and then hold it and move it around. So it's um, kind of a simple process, but not so simple. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So in our previous videos, what we have done is we have created this little scene here where gazing at this ball will cause an animation to occur. We don't necessarily want that animation to occur right now because we just want to be able to pick that ball up and move it around. So uh, we need to be able to move around first for testing purposes. So uh, add your GVR editor emulator to your scene if you've deleted it. Uh, just add it back in there. Hit play. And now we can look around. We can select that object after three seconds. Wait. And then the animation moves us down to this other other uh, menu. Okay. So that's basically, you know, the, the gist of the idea. Uh, however, we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't need the animation anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here to Player, where we have this Descendify script. Let's go ahead and up, open the script up so that we can see it and see what we're talking about. Okay, so basically we have our, uh, we created a variable for time so that we have something to time. And then we also created a transform for an image that we're calling Radial Progress. Okay, that Radial Progress has a fill amount which allows us to uh, set it to the timer, and then add to that time uh, in order for it to be able to select something. So if that time has been longer than three seconds, it will run this subroutine called change spot, which will then play the anime or the animation called Decentify. And Decentify is that animation where we go from one menu down to the next menu. So pretty simple. Uh, and if you've been following along the, with the videos, you should know all about that. Um, so that's great. What we are going to do now <laughs> is cannibalize this script. Okay, so we, we don't need the we don't need the ability to move things around anymore. So what I'm going to do is instead of creating a brand new script, we're going to just delete all the stuff that we don't need. Okay, and I I know that uh, we should probably go through this uh, a little bit more in depth, but I do have more stuff that I need to get done today, so I'm going to get in trouble if I don't. Okay, so starting off right off the bat, now we have the basic components of a timer, okay? And that timer, when it gets ready to do something, it's going to call a subroutine. We are going to need to change that subroutine to something else. Like, I'm going to call it grab the ball, okay? Because that's basically what we're doing. And so we'll come down here. This doesn't really need to be public, but it is anyway, just in case we want to use it in some other fashion. I have heard, though, that uh, don't don't extrapolate or don't extend your code out in anticipation of things that you are looking for. Oh, wait, let's also change this here. I want that timer to go a little bit faster, so we're just going to change that to two. Okay, so when the two-second timer goes off, we are going to grab the ball, and then now we have this grab the ball right here. But how are we going to grab the ball? Well, let's go up here and create some new variables. Okay, the first thing that we're going to need is a variable, uh, basically a transform, if you will, called my hand. Okay, so we need a hand, but in order to gain access to the hand, we need the transform of the hand. So when, whenever we're grabbing an object like this, uh, like the transform of radial progress, we radial progress, get component, fill amount, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so right now we're just looking at how to deal with the movement of an object, not not an animation. So, okay, so public transform my hand, we will also need a public rigid body. Okay, that rigid body 
is going to be the object that we are picking up. So we're going to call it the ball. Okay? So we need my hand to hold it, and we need the ball so that we have something to hold. Okay? Come down here to your grab the ball, and let's go ahead and make that work. So we want the ball. Okay, we want the ball transform parent. Okay, we want to grab the transform of the ball and we want to change its parent. And what we want that parent to be now is my hand. We want my hand to, to the transform of my hand to be holding the ball. So this transform goes into that transform. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Okay, um, but like I said, we had to cannibalize the script because I really didn't want to have to rewrite all of this stuff right here again uh, just to be able to get this out. I mean, when I watch a video, I want it to happen right now. <laughs> so, okay, so we save that. That is good. All right, that's all we really needed to do for our code. Let's go back here to our scene. All right, right now, that player still has this descent, bleh, Descendify script. We do not want it to have that. So we are going to remove that component. We can no longer stare at this ball and make it move. That's fine. Or make our camera move. That's fine. So we're going to go to Pepito, and we are going to give Pepito the Descendify script because it is Pepito that we want to be able to move. Okay? Now, if we just run ahead, go ahead and start this right now, not only does the Descendify script not have anything really in it, but it's also active right now. So if we did have anything in it, it would automatically start running that timer, which is not what we want it to do. So go ahead and uncheck it. Uh, and then let's fill these in. The ball, obviously, uh, is Pepito. My hand is obviously going to be somewhere uh, in the camera. So let's go ahead and come over here. So we have our player, which holds our main camera. And then we have our GVR reticle pointer, which allows us to look at objects altogether. So this is, this is a whole other story. This is the GVR reticle pointer is something that comes with uh, the Google VR. And uh, we haven't really discussed how to make a pointer of our own. So definitely use theirs until we can cover that. All right. But what we need here is a new empty object, and we are going to call that my hand. Okay. I don't like that. My hand. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to look at Pepito, and we are going to say my hand is my hand. The ball is Pepito, which is the ball. But here's the problem. If you click in here, there is nothing here. And the reason for that is because Pepito does not have a rigid body. So what we'll need to do is add component, rigid body. I typed in rigid here already. So just type in R-I-G-I, -I, got your rigid body, boom. Okay, now this rigid body, <laughs> now that it is applied to Pepito, if you hit play, Pepito is going to fall. So we want to make sure that Pepito doesn't fall. We want to uncheck Use Gravity. And now, Pepito stays put, right where he's supposed to be. Excellent. All right, but we still have to, you know, fill this stuff out. Otherwise, this is useless. So let's go ahead and check our rigid bodies again. And look, now Pepito has a rigid body. He's in the rigid body um, selection area. <laughs> All right, and my hand is obviously my hand from up here, so let's drag that over here. Now, I could have named this anything. I could have named it the hand or, you know, my mitts, whatever. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, just so that you know, you don't have to name it the hand or my hand or whatever. So I like to clarify that because sometimes people just don't know. All right, now radio progress is attached to an object called image, okay? And the reason for that is, if you remember, we created a canvas, and then we created an image. And that image is the circle. And that circle is a uh, basically a, a circle, okay? Uh, a circle that is set 
a circle that is set to a sprite, so that way when we are using it, we can uh, change the fill amount from simple to filled, which gives us access to this particular fill amount right here, which is what we are manipulating right here. Okay, so now that you're on page with that, uh, let's see, where are we now? So we've got our Pepito has all of the values that it needs right here. I made my time public so that way if you're testing it you could see this variable rising. Uh, so it's not really necessary to have this public. It is though. Or so I mean it is public but it's not necessary. Okay so let's look at our event trigger. Uh, since we deleted the script from player because we're not moving the camera anymore I, it got rid of some of our functions here. So we're going to come up here, we're going to choose Pepito, because Pepito has the Descendify script. We want to click here on No Function, come down here to Descendify, and enable that. Okay? But down here, we're going to need to make sure that if we look away, the script stops working and resets itself. So the very first thing we'll do is come to Pepito, we will grab that same Descendify script, but we are going to use the Resetinator subroutine. And that Resetinator subroutine is right here. It basically resets our time, and then it resets our variable, so for the progress. Um, and I guess you could just go in here and do it some other way, but this is the cleanest way that I could, I could possibly make it, so... Uh, at least for now. You know, I learn a little bit every day. All right, so now that we've reset it, we also need to make sure that it is turned off. So Pepito, Descendify, Bool enabled, and leave it unchecked. So checked is active, unchecked is inactive. Okay, pretty simple stuff. So, all right, and make sure that your Defend uh, Descendify script is unchecked, uh, or otherwise it will automatically start. So let's go ahead and test this out and see what we've got. So we've got, this can move around, we can look around, and when we look at our object, it starts. If we look away, it stops. So that part is good. Now what happens if we let it fill all the way? Oh my goodness. There you go. Now you have picked up an object. An object that you could not touch. All right, and as you can see, there's some resetting issues when we uh, dip behind our dip behind another object and the thing is occluded, but it still holds the ball. Okay, so my hand is still holding the ball, and it will until we decide to drop it. Uh, however, that is a bit more of an involved process, so I will put that in the next video. But until then, I wanted to say thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, thank you to all the new subscribers, welcome to the channel, and I do promise that uh, there will not be so many uh, long waits between these tutorials. I, Like I said, I just got back from the mountains, I had no cell service <laughs> whatsoever, uh, but now that I am here, I can devote more time to uh, what is really important, and that's making these tutorials for you guys. So thank you very much. I will catch you on the very next episode when we, well, <laughs> learn how to drop a ball. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next episode.